Welcome back. This is the Morning Bright Focus Show with me, Victoria Chibet, and of course we have our expert on site, uh, David Kibe. And we'll, today we are talking on an interesting topic on parenting. And as we know, parenting is one of the most researched fields in social science, whether it's having to know whether to spank your children, whether to avoid overfeeding your children, whether what is good parenting skills, what is bad parenting skills. It's all been researched. And today we have one someone who can be explaining and talking to us about it. Remember to send your questions and your comments through our social media handles, Facebook, Focus TV Kenya, Instagram, Focus TV underscore Kenya, uh, and Twitter at Focus TV Kenya. Remember, we are live on Facebook as well, so you can get to that page and share, 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 share. All right, let's go straight to parenting. Thank you very much. It's nice to see you again. Nice to see you as well. Yes, I'm excited for this topic. Wow. It's interesting. It's a good one. It's right? A good one. Yes, right, it right. It okay, so let's just start with what is parenting. Uh, well, first of all, let me take this opportunity to welcome the viewers. Okay. Karibuni Karibuni sana. Sana. Uh, then we just want to talk about parenting today. Yeah. Uh, and uh, a little introduction or definition would go a long way. Yeah. Uh, so parenting basically is raising up a child or raising up children. As That's simple as that. Bad. Yes. Really? And uh, we, we've all been raised up, we've all been born in a, in, in a family. And so there has been that role played by parents you know, when you were growing up. All the way from infancy, all the way to teenage, then post-teenage, adolescence, uh, which basically means adult becoming then all the way to young adults. It doesn't matter whether you are 40 or 60 or 80, you had a parent. And who you are right now, Victoria, is, is a product of your environment in parenting. Okay. How you're brought up really determines or influenced who you are today. You cannot run away from that. Mm -hmm. And I remember last time we also talked about handed down emotions. Yes. Uh, uh, and so, as I said, we are products of our past in parents, in, 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 you know, in parenting. So, uh, you can only be able to tell the kind of a background one has based, uh, but by actually thinking or looking at the parenting side okay. of it. Because, mm -hmm. as I say, you cannot run away from that. Mm. Well, some people are go-getters, others are people are a little bit shy, others are social. Uh, you remember we talked about the personalities, different types of personalities. Mm -hmm. uh, all that is a product of parenting. I remember also mentioning last time that uh, we, you know, in parenting, there's a very vital stage that a parent needs to, you know, to really uh, be keen on, especially the developmental phase of a child. Yes, and that you said is, when children begin to talk and to understand things and to make sounds a little bit of, you know, because any sound to a child is communication, a parent then needs to be very keen on that uh, so that they don't lose the child. If you lose a child at the time they are, they are beginning to talk all through the developmental phase, then post-developmental phase, if you lose them there, you'll hardly get them again. Wow. Uh, so let's begin from the onset of the developmental face at infancy okay. uh, and uh, so, because we have to go right all the way exactly so before we go to that why then is parenting so important you know i know that we a parent is not necessarily your mom or dad right so true. is that true so true a parent is anyone who influences you exactly you who brings grow. you up who, who raises brings you up who, who raises, raises you up. exactly yeah. all right so why then is parenting so important well, let Especially me take you, yeah, yeah. Of well, I, I like mounting my talks on my philosophy on the Bible. Okay. And uh, because the family is where God initiated a relationship. Uh, he also sustains a family. And therefore, a family being initiated and supported by God is, is a very important aspect of life. Because when you have a good family, upbringing, then you have a healthy nation. We also have a healthy church. Right. But the order is that when you have a good family that is not uh, per se dysfunctional, we'll have a good church and then we'll have a good world or a good nation. It doesn't go the other way around. Okay. 
And so uh, sometimes as parents we miss. Whether you are an adopted child or a stepfather, stepfather, a stepmother, you're still a parent. We miss the, uh, you know, the, the, the important aspect of uh, you know, knowing exactly why God really has, has, has a desire that a family is good. It is therefore very important if every parent would zero in and understand the aspects of a family and the importance of it. Because if you don't know the importance of a family, then you are in for a root shock. Because God desires that a family is right. A family is, and right also means righteous. Okay. Righteous here, I don't mean uh, holy or not holy or right. sinful or evil. I mean right from the word right. Okay. So that everything else will flow. You know, everything else falls into place. Without a good family, things don't fall in place. Mm. If you look at the society today, yes. you'll see that we have so many ills. We have problems in schools, problems in the churches, problems mm -hmm. in the political scene, problems everywhere you go, problems in the matatus, problems. Because it zeroes in on the family. What kind of an upbringing was there? That's true. Actually, yeah. when we were talking about on when on newspaper review today, we've realized that the rate of teenage pregnancy, you know, is actually a crisis oh, right. right now. Right. Yes. After the exams were done, we realized that we saw that many of the students had their exams done in hospital mm -hmm. after delivering. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that is a crisis. That is a crisis. Yeah, and as I said, uh, many things about us today as adults, whether young adults, older people, uh, it rises and falls on the kind of family you are brought up, okay. right? Okay. And so a parent, you know, being able to understand their role and that that role plays a very vital role, then they will not sit back but will only take their place okay. as allowed by God himself. Mm -hmm. Well, now, when a child begins to talk, right? right. To, you know, to communicate, right. whether to utter a word or a sound, there are vital things a parent needs to be able to capture and enforce in the child. One of them, uh, I call them the five key words when bringing up a child at infancy, the moment they begin to talk. One of them is come, kuja. Mm -hmm. uh, the other word is open. Because, you know, if infants will try to solve anything they come across, they need to understand. So if an infant will take something to put in the mouth, you know, they don't know. They do that indiscriminately. You need to tell them open, you know, as in the mouth, open. Mm -hmm. That's the key word number two. Number three is hush or silence. Mm -hmm. Another one is um, stop. Or no. Another one is no. Okay. Right? Uh, those are vital words, among many other words. So a parent would need to First of all, be able to do that and influence it on the child because leadership is influence. You are a leader. A parent is a leader. You need to influence the child by beginning from the nitty gritties as they come up. Because as I said, remember, this is the developmental phase of the child. You miss that one, you miss and the child from good. Child. And you said the development stages ranges from what age to what uh, age? We say from four to eight, but now nowadays it, it is a little bit changing based on development, uh, the digital age, the dot-net era, you know, children are becoming sharp at a very, very, very tender age. Okay. So it has come down. Mm -hmm. Just the, like uh, the age of uh, the girls would, the teenage, I mean, the, the teenage age for, the teenage for a girl is now coming down. Zaman mm -hmm. uh, is So children developmental phase has a little bit come down. Because when they grow up, they come across, you know, they find Androids. They find uh, tablets, they find computers, they find uh, smart very TVs. True, very true. They, they, they become so, so, so sharp at a very early age. And I see that parents nowadays even give the children computer, I mean, tablets to quiet them down, yeah. to make them quiet. They All give right. them phones, and, you know. So from a young age, they know about phones. Yeah. Uh, and actually, as, as we progress in this, you will realize that that is a very, very, uh, very, very slippery ground uh, because parents. You know, forget to instill the right values and allow gadgets to instill the values instead. Because parents now, because of the busy schedules, they don't want to influence the children or talk to them directly. They are now allowing gadgets to do parenting on their state. Oh, no. So we'll come to that later. Come, open, hush, no, or stop. Right. Keywords. Uh, if a child is going to the fire, or crawling to the fire, you say stop. They need to understand that word. However you, however you pronounce it, or even if you use it in your mother tongue, 
wacha or you know that kalenji in word that you want to use let them understand there's no language that is superior to the other only that the environment tends to make us think that one language or mother tongue is superior to the other no but whichever language you are trying to teach or train your child with you need to allow them understand those words and either come to stop or no uh, if it, they become noisy you say hush or silent you know or you indicate by silence they need to master those words as they grow up so that you become to you begin to instill well uh, I, i wouldn't really talk more on that because uh, cuz it's, it's a very deep area it's a very wide topic w what i'm thinking of is just try to capture a few areas that are important right i do uh, have know, a question about yes, yes. the words that you're saying mm -hmm. what why is it important for them to learn those particular words you said it's important for B because why? yeah those words are value based Okay. Right. The oh. action based and an action is based on the value system. All right. Whatever you do is a product of your thought process. Okay. Okay. Your thought patterns, you know, what you do is a product of your thought process. Right. So these words are actually uh, meant to trigger an action and that action is mounted on the thought process. So when I speak this word, they are important because they are as important as the action itself. Okay. Right? I understand that. And remember that, that at that stage, it doesn't make sense to try to explain. The child does not understand. You know, we, call, we say that they are, they are, their concentration level is really diminished. Uh, and so that's why we are not really talking about explaining the meaning of words to the child. It's just mentioning them, mm -hmm. try to take an action. Right, right. You, okay. you don't need to explain why, mm -hmm. because the why question will come later in life right. as they grow. They won't even understand. They will do not even understand. Why. Okay. Uh, yeah. So then is there perfect parenting according to Well, th that's a very good question. Uh, and that is what I was now coming to. To be honest with you, is every f I bring every family set up. Let's say let me use, use the word family. Every family is quote unquote dysfunctional in some way. Okay. Dysfunctional in some way. All right, okay. And I'll give you examples or categories of family or examples of family or parenthood that are going to explain that a little bit more. Uh, for example, you've had what we call, uh, this, uh, we call them, because that, that lies under dysfunctional parenting, call them severe parents, right? Severe parents are parents who know two things or who, you know, instill two things in a child. It's either pain or pleasure. Mm -hmm. It's either punishment or reward. Okay. It's called it's called a severe parent. So we are going to the we types to of that. parenting. Yes, now no, we are. We are now, oh. That's why I said every 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 family is a little bit quote unquote dysfunctional. dysfunctional. Okay. There's no perfection in anything. Okay. Now, a severe parent is a parent who is punishment oriented and reward oriented. Period. Okay. It's either punishment or reward. Okay. If a child has does a mistake, right? They do not know exactly try to you know they do not care why they did a mistake they do not care why the child is has a problem in triggering an action that is positive all they know is on the kikosea na chapa kikosea then we are good to go you know it's called the zero sum requirement whether you are eat you are either eat or not na yuko shida it's called the severe parent most of us today have been brought up like that most of the old years i know they would agree they've been brought up or raised up like that that mama alikuwa nikikosea na nchapa and that is where the problem is why let me tell you why a severe parent if you do a flimsy mistake a fl i know a flimsy mistake the punishment is as rough as a small mistake oh okay because they are severe mm -hmm. now what happens in the mind of the ch child in the thought process of the child whether they speak it out or they speak to themselves is that nikifanya kitu kidogo nitachapwa sana nikifanya kitu kibwa na so kama ndapanda if i do something small and the punishment is so severe and i do something great the punishment is equally as severe then i better do something great right more distressing nitachapwa tu mara moja what happens the child becomes hardcore because they are severe yes Sometimes you see children who So if they do a small mistake they'd rather do small the spanking and then is do a, a, a severe and do a as a big mistake. mistake. So oh, okay. yeah. as they grow up they mm. begin to to to, to be, you know to, to to we call it rationalization. Okay. So for example yeah. 
if I was maybe if this small young person who knows mistake is mistake, whatever. Yes. They'll, they'll take sugar, but they won't take kidogo sugar. They'll take the whole pack of sugar. Yeah, because, because even, even, even a small bite, yes. w- w- it we deserves an equally harsh <laughs> spanking or punishment. I said it is either punishment <laughs> oh or what? That's a severe period. That's so true. Okay. When you see okay. children who are hardcore, you, you, I've been able to visit... Uh, what do you mean by hardcore? Hardcore, Explain using the word criminals. Hardcore criminals. Right, I've been I've been privileged to 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 visit. In the, I was privileged. Let me use that okay. word. In the past, to visit quite a number of prisons in Kenya. I did committee. I used to go for talks every week. Okay. I did Shimola Tewa. Okay. I did uh, I did industrial remand prison. You know. Mm-hmm. And one thing I realized is most of the prisoners, seventy five percent or above, are below are between the age of twenty to thirty five. Wow. They are very young. Oh my and goodness. if you ask them, I, I remember I asked a few why, why they were you know, incarcerated. Okay. And they would tell you, uh, you know, the reasons they would tell you are actually mounted on parenting. That maybe, I, you know, I hit a boy hard, I murdered, you know, I, mm-hmm. I broke a leg, right. you know, right. okay. I, I drowned somebody in water. Oh, no. And they would tell you that, ah, when I was growing up, I was growing up. I would get undeservedly thorough spanking. If I was a kuba, the same level of intensity of spanking or punishment. Ah, so I mean, because why? Because I was a kid, I was a pig. I was a mingi, I was the same. So why should I? What is funny? I took kuba mara moja so that I could do mara moja. Oh no! You know, so th- that is that is actually the consequence of severe parenting. But let's talk about severe parenting yes. in terms of pleasure now, where reward... Is either punishment or reward, or okay. pain or pleasure. For the reward segment, is it also the same as the punishment? Whether you do something small, yes, yes. something big, the same thing. I said it is what we call zero-sum requirement, that you are either it or not, right? So, uwefanya kitu kubwa, mzuri, the parent is happy. So they can give you a reward for that. Umefanya makosa, whether it's big or small, it's pain. It must be, there must be pain. Lazima upanishiwe. You keep, you know, unakuta, mtoto ikose lazima achapwe. You've seen on TV, broken limbs, ngino mechomo na pasi, right. others have a problem. Mechomo uh, na, na maji, maji moto. I, I watched on news some other time and where, where a child actually tied two year old and a six year old in the forest because of a mistake. For all night. And, and, and amazingly enough, God was able to save them from the wildlife, from animals. That is that is basically a product of pain pleasure principle oh, in severe no. parenting. That's like, All right. Yes. Uh, looking at that again, oh, there's another consequence of severe parenting. Okay. Severe parents are usually uh, let me use this word. They are usually people who don't uh, don't, dis- don't don't demand or they don't need an explanation whatsoever because okay. they are severe. Now, if a child does a mistake, right, in this dysfunctional setup. What happens? The parent does not listen or would not probe or not inquire why, or not try to find out why they did what they did. So they don't care if the child is okay? So it's, there's a lot of noise, a lot of verbal tasso, mm-hmm. as the child tries to explain, something happens. They what begin happened? to stammer. Because oh, no. they're trying to explain and mom does not listen. Okay. Some, 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 some people will are stammerers congenially or congenitally, okay. but others stammer because of severe parenting. The parent does not listen, you try to explain they are rough on your back, they are hard on you, they are hitting hard before you explain. that It, it, it has caused many children to become stammerers in life. Oh no. Yep. What? That's severe parenting. That's very, I mean, severe parenting has so many consequences. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And in Africa, I would say, um, I cannot give any specific data, but by and large, most of us in those years, you know, Earlier. because some parents are, are, we have boomers and the bastards. That's a different topic. Boomers and pastors are people born between 50s and 70s. Okay. Okay. okay? okay. Between the 50s and the 70s are called boomers. We have the boomers and the bastards. Mm-hmm. That age, and even preceding that period of time, most parents were severe. Oh, okay. All right? And remember, uh, if it is a father, he has never had time with the children. They believed children are uh, is, is a task of women. Women and children are oh, in the no. same basket. Right. So whether a child is behaves rightly or negatively, it is usually the task of a mother or the responsibility of the mother. And would find right. that the father would punish the mother as well. Exactly. Now, if a, pa- a child would err, then they'd say, <laughs> 
He goes, Suicide. by and large, the philosophy then, or the culture then was, child and mother are the same. Yeah, the the same. discipline of a child is mounted on the mother. Okay. Okay. And that's why men, by and large, avoided disciplining the children. In fact, the issue of children, fathers now coming closer to their daughters and sons have been enforced recently. It's now they are beginning to have a father having a time with the daughter or the son. That's one example of parenting. All right, let's go to that example. Because as we said, uh, maybe the next session we'll have next week, God willing, is now the panel where we'll have questions. questions. And I thought it's good to have introductions yes. of a topic, then we have the panel so that they know exactly definitely. what to ask. Right. The second level is called absentee parent. Okay. That's still a dysfunctional type of, of, of parenting. Absentee parent is a parent who is never available. In the critical years, in the developmental phase of a child, even post-developmental phase, they are never available. Okay. Some communities believe more in that a man, a man's value is calculated, or the mean of the value of a man is calculated based on what they are able to do, or based on the kind of money they bring home, or what they are able to lay on the table. Mm -hmm. Others, when they don't do that, just because, let me, let, let, let me tell you something that has come to my mind. Right. Failure, failure of the, you know, the parents to talk to the children, or to have time for the children, has made now them try to drown these children, quote unquote, drown them in the education system. They, that's true. Right? Mm -hmm. You say now, when Ataka Usome, do you know the kind of an impact that one has? You are bringing up a child in the way, or in the thought, or in the philosophy that, Life is made up of books only. <laughs> so there's no any other end of life. Life is about school and books and teacher and a blackboard and a school van. Oh, no. Right. Just Do look at it. They become uh, excellent in the academic. Not really. I'll come to that. Look at it. From one and a half years, daycare. 6.30, dro uh, drop off time, 8.30 p.m. Wow. 6.30 a.m., 8.30. Those are, over, those are almost 15 hours. Those are a lot of right? hours. The parent has been busy, Akikuja, eat, go to bed. Morning, rise, va, go back to the daycare. Cool. The daycare, the person who is taking care of the children, parents never vet these people who are in the yeah, daycare. They, they don't have time for that. They don't have in the first place, if they don't have vital time for the children, how would they have vital time to, 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 to background check the people in the daycare in the schools? Exactly, exactly. Now, from one and a half years, school and van, van and school, home late, sleep, wake up. Then, by the time you hit seven, six years, again, school, the parent is too busy, boarding. What happens? You only used to chalk and van and teacher and the bell. When you are in school, you find children equally with the same, same kind of a bring up, a dysfunctional, uh, uh, you Absentee know, parenting. right, kind of a setup, a bringing that is dysfunctional. So we have a toast salad in the whole school of children from dysfunctional families. It becomes a big problem. Why? Now, what happens is this, boarding all the way to class 8 board, you know, from, from daycare, you know, come a boarding, because that's, that's half a day, that's semi-boarding, mini-boarding, then full boarding, class 8 boarding, from there, pop, January boarding, uh, form 1, form 4, from there, university again, it's like boarding. Everything is boarding. So, by the time the ch child realizes themselves, when they are off school at the age of 24, 25, if they happen to go to university, or if it is post-college, they hardly know nothing about life. To them, mom will call Mambia, let me see your mean score, let me see your paper, let me see your, what position were you? Mm -hmm. And then, severe parent, unapito waje, unashindu waje, spanking, that is spanking. What do they tell them? Life is made up of books and mean score. Did you know, and, and I, I, I think it is important for the viewers to understand this, and I want to make it as a punchline, that the mean score of life, the success of life, the mean score cannot be calculated with books alone. It can never be calculated with books alone. Dear viewers, it cannot. Especially for the parents out there. Right. You need to know. There are, there's a whole world outside here. Exactly. Though, though these people, now this is what I was coming to. We've had now people, that's why you see people, even in politics, people are doing silly stuff based on they were never brought up. Oh the God. parents were absentee parents. So they don't... They have nothing. In other words, they were never mentored. So they fight in, the, in, 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 in Parliament, they fight in the, whatever they are, they insult the president, they know, oh, no. they, 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 they don't, they even insult the employees, because only uh, the way they were brought up. They That's why I said... They, they don't have social skills. And that is why I said, God begins with the family, 
if it is healthy the way he wants, that's divine order, then you have a good church and a good country, the world will be at peace. But now it's, 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 it's the other way around. We have missed it. So, this is the impact of absentee parents in terms of life skills. Mm -hmm. That we have, you know, school, 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 all the way to, to, to 24 years or 21 or 23. So what we have is what I call academic robots, uh, robots but thoughtless dwarfs. Oh, no. Academic robots, but, but thought thoughtless dwarfs. People who do not have life skills because the parent never never not imparted child, on the child. Okay. But don't they get these life skills from associating with their colleagues in school, they don't. for example? They don't. And the teachers? The only person who can instill you, I said, the discipline that the life skill is apparent because he is the person who is with you during the developmental phase. The others are secondary. Oh, right. They would and influence. The parent, you know, whatever exactly. the parent tells you, you are more likely to get, exactly. to, to follow. Exactly. Than when someone else tells you, they'll be like, my parent has not told me that, yes. why should I follow? Right. And then uh, the people I think would help me, they also have a problem. My, ch my, my, my friends also have a problem in upbringing. Oh, no. The so, time I, and actually the time I begin to know how to choose friends, it is late in life. Oh, no. Because sometimes okay. we choose friends as adolescents or teenage based on what we call uh, puppy love. Okay. Oh, yeah, you know that puppy love, like a puppy, yeah? <laughs> it's puppy love. It's basically not constructive friendship. Right. Because at that time, you hardly know what you are mounted on. You hardly know your philosophy. You hardly know what is life. You've been brought up in books. You are just an academic robot, but a thoughtless dwarf. But you don't know. You don't know. Yep. Okay. Now, looking at that, let's go to the other level. Because uh, we are expecting questions to come in. Right. There's what we call the overindulgent parent. Mm -hmm. That's still uh, it's a dysfunction. It's, it's okay. Overindulgent. That. Mm -hmm. that now is still or has an impact on the child. Whatever I need in life, life will give. <laughs> Plus, I feel like do these people also when you, when a child says this person wronged me, the mother doesn't ask the child how or anything they go to that person yes. they say you wronged my child you have to so you know the the child is exactly. defended in everything because you are overindulgent they feel entitled and so naturally. you take this child to school or you take them to for sunday school the problem begins there the sunday school teacher maybe was brought up nicely okay but now you brought in a dysfunctional child. you know a child who has been brought up by uh, let, let me just make it simple dysfunctional or uh, overindulgent parent I'm a Kuja Sunday school. An overindulgent parent, a product, you know, a child who is a product of overindulgency is a child who does not take a no for an answer. Hmm. They don't take a no. Wow. Because the parent never tells them a no. Exactly, because everything is yes. Mom, I want to bite so and so bite. Mom, I want to sit on the pillow. Chukua. <laughs> Mom, I want to hit this sufria. Chukua. Uh, eat it. I want, Mom, I want, I want, I want, I, I, I want, I want pizza. Cream. I want ice cream. I want to go to church. I don't oh, want this no. close. You find yeah. children who throw things in the house that they want. And they're, they're TV, tantrums, they're, they're the tantrums. tantrums everywhere. By the way, do you know, uh, at the age of two, mm -hmm. three and yes. four, they're about, we call them, uh, I'm forgetting that name. That age is where children tend to become bullies. Because uh, this is a time of curiosity. Uh, you know, they are called the terrible two. You've heard of terrible two? Yes. yes. yes now, if you're not a parent and you're an absentee <laughs> and you're a severe parent, you don't talk to them, you don't instill this <laughs> value. When they grow up, now you become overindulgent and end up at church and asumbu a mwalimu and asumbu a Sunday school teacher and asumbu a at a pastor and then the problem goes to the government and I go to sell. Why? So the same child you did not uh, instill values on will, is going to be the problem in your life. When you are old, you have a lot of time going to prison, going to the courts. When you are a mwalimu, you hardly work. You are going to have stress, depression, you are going to have it Because what goes around comes around. Basically, yes. So, of oh, intelligent no. parent. Now, this is a child who does not take an offer and answer. Hmm? Even when it comes to their girlfriends, for example. Exactly. The same, same process is a chain, is a reactionary chain. All the way, the latitude of acceptance is totally different. Is a yes. Okay. So do they also become overindulgent parents? Exactly. Now, that one makes them become overindulgent parents. Oh, no. Right? Mom used to give me this. Okay, then they get married. Your girlfriend, your fiance, and I appear the mood to overindulge from overindulgent parenthood. They, You're also they from the overindulgent. Together. Exactly. The overindulgent and overindulgent so, come together. Exactly. <laughs> you never know. There's a high chance they also. So, what happens? Okay, okay. We have what we call 
manipulative controllers. Both of them are manipulative oh, controllers. No. Right. Because you have to give me uh -huh. or I uh, or, or I hang right. myself or oh, I burn the whole house. Yes, I'm an, you know true. I mix the, the gas you leak. Me, I will uh, you know. leave you. I will, yes. I will die. I'm, I, I, I'm going to... Those are po the people who manipulate are from manipulate Because time. mama, I'm a baba, I'm a stepfather. Was okay. that that. Wow. wow. And that I'm is actually... It, it's more psychological because it is actually what we call... Uh, I'm forgetting. <laughs> Ooh, sorry. Um, okay. we, don't worry. You know, speakers, we sometimes the thought process is ahead of the it's, time. It's definitely okay. Ahead we actually you do want to go on a short short break yeah. as you think we'll about what, yes. you're, <laughs> what you're talking <laughs> about. So we've learned <laughs> about uh, dysfunctional families. We've learned of the first one, the severe parenting. Mm -hmm. Number two, we've learned the absentee parenting. And number three, we've learned about the overindulgent parenting. Good. So when we come back, we want to see some of the questions that you have on uh, Facebook for us. We are going on a short short break, but remember to join the conversation through our social media handles facebook focus tv kenya instagram focus tv underscore kenya and twitter at focus tv kenya remember we are live on facebook as well so your comments as they come in we'll be reading them and if you have any question concerning this parent parenting uh please remember to text or comment all right we are going but we will we'll be right back Well, From when they are so young, they are already in daycare. It's not wrong to, to be busy, but people will always rationalize that I'm so busy. So 6 a.m. You know, sometimes I come across children, you know, when you are, you know, when you are passing, either walking or driving, you right. see children from as, as, as young as two years, 6.30 right. a.m. kwa stage anagoja gari. Ama one year, eight months, others 12 months, infants, anapela kwa daycare. Wow. If the Welcome back. This is the Morning Bright Focus show with me, Victoria Chabet. And on set, I have our expert, David Kibe, and he is talking to us today about parenting. We have been able to tackle three uh, types of dysfunctional parenting. Number one type was the overindulgent parent. Number two was the severe parent. And number three was the absentee parent. And today we have some comments on Facebook, and I'll read some of them. Uh, Moses Bugwa is asking, how then can someone change after? After being brought up in a dysfunctional family uh, number two is Wilson he's saying what then is good parenting okay. right and the other one uh, someone is saying Jacqueline Yambura is saying present as usual and she he she is watching from Githunguri thank you Jacqueline all right so David, those are the two questions uh, the Facebook. first question is uh, then how can we be able to continue it again then how yeah how can someone then who's been okay. brought up in a dysfunctional family yes. change well uh, uh, first of all uh, uh, the, the viewer who has asked that question, we are not yet done, okay. but uh, there's always hope. If it is, if it is, it is never too late. But if you are never, uh, you never had a chance to go through good parenting, which I'll, I'm about to talk about, uh, which is balanced parenting, then there's a chance that when you become a parent now, but dear viewer, you need now to adapt those skills to help your offspring from then, because it is never too late. If it did not work for you, it can work for others. Yes. Mm -hmm. So there's still a chance. There's still a chance. And we can only learn by reading, uh, attending seminar, parenting seminars, listen to this kind of a fora, forum. or a forum. This kind of fora is, is uh, these kind of forums are good. Okay. Well, lovely. So. All right. And the other person was asking, what then is good parenting, which we will yeah, we'll talk, talk about. Yeah, we'll talk right. about that. So okay. just uh, mm -hmm. I would request them to stay glued on the screen. All right. Just, uh, just as a recap, mm. let's just talk about a little of what you were just talking about before we went to a break. We were talking about the overindulgent parent. Mm -hmm. Who is a parent who does not say no? Yes, is a yes parent. Is a yes parent. Yes. Doesn't ask why. Yes. Exactly. And so the impact is the child becomes a child who can never uh, take, take a, a no, no for, for an answer. answer. Okay. Yes. So we, we, I'm sure even you viewers out there, you've met so many people who they are not okay with no's. They don't mm. understand when you tell them a no. Right. And it's true. Sometimes your parent may not be too overindulgent. David mm -hmm. It's just that they don't say no so many times. Mm -hmm. So even as a person, you ha you don't, you're not okay with no's. Yes. I know that even for most of my, you know, people we've, I've met, they've had to grow up to accept no's, you know? Yes. But right. for them to accept a no, 
it has taken parenting. Exactly. Yeah, it has taken others begin to take a no or to take a yes for an answer when it is too late oh, no. in life. Wait, take a yes for an answer. What do you I mean? I mean, if a child is is a child who cannot take a no for an answer, then it's a yes child. Yeah. Now, what happens? Even their sexuality is affected because we measure everything is a yes. So if somebody wants to to use you sexually, you still say say you still accept. Oh no. Well, so you ask, you whatever you say, mom gives. No you have a well. problem picking no, and oh, you have a problem no. saying no, okay. because to the so to you and no and no is a taboo word. Oh no. Exactly. So it's 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 bad on all on both sides. sides. On both sides. So you don't know how to say no. Yes. You also don't, don't know, know how to take, how a, to take a no. Exactly. Oh no. Exactly. That's so sad. Uh, so you become a yes person. The opposite of a no is a yes person. Oh, also. So sad. These are people who it's, are it, easily abused. Exactly. That's what, that's what makes people easily abused. Even at job, even in school, even in relationships. It's a whole ripple effect. It's a whole ripple effect. So can you now go to the next level? Yes, let's go to the next level now. This is what we call, uh, uh, what we call, uh, uh, over permissive parent. Over permissive. Okay. It's a different, it's, it's not like over indulgent. Over permissive, over indulgent is something to do with gifts and giving, right? And the child taking. But over permissive, he may not give, but he allows every activity, every action is allowable to that parent. Anything you want is allowable. Of you permit. Mom, I want to do this. You over you are from the word permission. Called over permissive parents. Isn't that the same as a yes parent? It's still the same. But that's still a category. We, we need to we, we need to talk them and so that there's no the, 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 it's not ambiguous. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So over permissive parent is another one. That one I will not talk because that one in relation to being overindulgent, over permissive is closely related. Okay, okay. Right? Okay. Well, because you yes, you are a yes, 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 parent. Overindulgent is from the word you give. You indulge by giving either money or what, what you know. And over permissive is allowing now, allowing actions. Either favorable or unfavorable. You become, you allow it all. These are people who, when they grow up, either in marriage or adolescence, they have a problem with also saying no or they have a problem they are so pushy in the words they are bossy people bossy ah, okay. they are pushy okay, okay. you know if i decide to do something you must allow me to do you must allow me to date this one you must allow me to go dance you must allow me to take it doesn't matter i want to take bang i want to i want to take pizza twice a day i oh, want no. to do over permissive right, parents right right there's a whole challenge there when it comes even to single parenthood whether it's a single dad or a single mom it's a problem what happens is because sometimes in this dysfunctional parenting, we try to balance a certain aspect of life by either by indulging or over permissiveness. It's something you're trying to, to balance. It's called balancing. It's actually an action of the brain. It's psychological. It's balancing or you become super reasonable. Right? Okay, uh, okay. Try to balance something uh, by trying to hide another. There's a problem or you, if you're an absentee parent, let's come back there. You're hardly there for the child. What happens? The child will learn to, you know. Exactly. So what you do, you allow things and actions to balance your absenteeism. Ah, okay. So an absentee parent can also be uh, come an over permissive. On the other side. Yes. Oh, because they're trying to balance. They're trying to they're balance. They're they rationalizing. Yes. They Take guilty. these. Yes. I'll buy your computer. I'll oh, buy your yes, car. I'll buy your true. toy. Whatever you want. So that the guardians become the parent. The friends become the parent. Mm -hmm. They fill a gap by being over permissive. What goes That's around, true. what goes around comes around. And I also had a question concerning, you know, from someone who's raised, raised from a severe parent. Mm -hmm. I've heard people say, my parent used to never let me do anything. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I'm going to give my child anything they yes, want. Exactly. That's also a repercussion exactly. from a dysfunctional family, right? It is highly witnessed in single parenting or single parenthood. Okay, okay. I'm busy, I'm the father, I'm the mother, mm -hmm. right? I'm both. So what I'll do is that I'll get so uh, so caught up in running and schedules and money, it's called money minting business, which is okay. But then you sacrificed at the beast of the child, you sacrifice the child. So instead of, because you, f you feel also bad and wanting deep inside, you balance that by over permissiveness. Others will uh, also do that by being overindulgent. It's a psychological issue. Okay. 
Okay, so uh, let's go to the other level because that one is a little bit clearer. It's not. Yes, it's uh, a bit clearer. Uh, and, and so there's what you call the parents who. Uh, let me try to use a phrase first, and then we'll get to the word. The parents who, you know, as they bring up children, would not allow um, what you call logical consequences of an action. Mm. What I mean is, parents, in as much as a child does wrong, they would not want to reason with the child. The impact of the action is this. Hey, Masi, when you cry loud, when you shout when parents are here, when we have visitors, when you pout, okay, when you become cranky and irritable in front of the guests, we will hardly talk. I cannot hear what guests are saying. I cannot hear what your grandpa is saying. So this kind of a parents also have a problem in terms of uh, if they don't allow the child to know that there's always a consequence of their actions. Okay? Okay. okay. Uh, and so, let me take you back a little bit. In parenting, it's, it's always good uh, to make children, as they grow up, to make them allow, I mean, to make them aware that every action has a consequence. So that, uh, and that is now what we say, when a parent is a faulty role model, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. Because that's the other level. When a parent is a faulty role model, they do not know exactly which areas to touch. They do not know exactly what values to instill. They do not know exactly what matters in life. What are the important areas? What are the important uh, prerequisites right. in parent? Okay. Okay. Uh, so the parent becomes a free-floating being. Hajui, you know, <laughs> it's like a neutral value child. Whatever wow. comes in, me, I, you know, it's good in life to stand for something. So they, they don't stand, stand for, for anything. Something. So they are not exactly. imparting any skills. To exactly. Children. We are just living life. Yes, because you're just a have, model, but faulty. The what child if does the not. The child has questions for such exactly. a parent. Exactly. The child does not know really what the parent stands for. Oh no. It's a faulty role model. So what happens to the child? Doesn't know whether the child, uh, the, the dad, can uh, loves forgiving, whether he loves to keep <laughs> time, whether he is just a parent who is on a gray area. Is a faulty role model kind of a parent. Wait, but if you have your mom constantly or your dad constantly there with you, wouldn't you as a child pick up on their values and some of the things that they stand for? But yes, but we have parents who you can hardly know where they stand, what they stand for. Because everything is permissible. Yes, exactly. So you become a faulty role. It's a model, yes. They want to emulate you because ch children learn by observing. Yes. But they really do not know what mom mm. is, is, is about, what I she stands for. Oh my goodness. Ajui, she can get angry, sometimes she's happy, sometimes she's a good timekeeper, sometimes, she sometimes she's organized in the house, sometimes she's not. Sometimes she's shouting, she's pouting also. So you are confused. It's called a faulty role model. <laughs> Just makes the child so confused. Oh, no. Ajui. Oh, no. So to them, everything is permissible. So what happens to the child then? They also become faulty role models. They stand for nothing. They become confused. Uh, and that is the beginning of relativism, that anything I do could be right, oh, depending on how you look at it. All right, so this is now brings these people who... Yes. Everything is permissible. Yes. They don't really have a no. Because mom, mom or dad or my stepfather, whoever is it, stands for nothing. I really do not know what they stand for. Wow. In this life, you must stand for something. You must there are stand also for the something. People who don't know how to say no, right? Exactly. They're also part of those people. Exactly. Okay. You really do not. You are not able to locate the latitude of a parent, mm -hmm. and that becomes a confusion of the child. Yeah. So it is important for parents out there to stand for something. Stand for if something. You don't have anything and to stand keep for. mentioning and instilling it. Keep mentioning and instilling it. Mm. Keep mentioning. Keep following up. Now. All right, that's very true because yeah. um, as I'm, I'm thinking about this and I realized that my, my parent, for example, used to always say, I don't like people touching things and taking them somewhere else. Mm. Leave those things where they are. No, that's important. Yes. Because we learned how to not take things from a certain place to take them to another mm. place. Yes. Even now you learn you cannot be touching things and dropping them somewhere else. Yes. Right? Okay. Interesting. Well, like, like what I said in what we call the terrible years, the terrible to children, <laughs> there's uh, an age uh, children want to be bullies because they, they are trying to learn things. They are trying mm -hmm. to uh, set boundaries from, from themselves. They All are right. trying to identify themselves. That's normally around two? Ar around two, two to three years. It's, it's terrible to. You say terrible to. Uh, children are bullies. They pinch, they pull the noses, they hit, they, oh. they, they throw away things. That's the time to, 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 to go back to the ones I told They you. lie as they well. They also lie as well. Uh, they also hit dad, they hit mom sometimes for a flimsy reason. 
by the as a parent, if your child is in that phase of identity crisis, kind of an identity crisis, you, you need not get frustrated. Yours is to calmly direct the child. Because mm -hmm. when they are bullying, they are trying to set up their territory. Okay, okay. Trying to understand themselves. Mm -hmm trying to bargain for themselves. Mm -hmm. So at that time is when you need now to balance the parenting. Because if you are not careful, you become over intelligent at that time, at that time you become of a permissive, you become a photo role model, you become a severe parent. If you are not careful, that's the time you'll confuse a child more. Mm -hmm. You need to okay. calm down and try to and, and you know by the way, it is different we have different types of children. Some children have got a kind of a special need at that mm -hmm. time. You need also to understand. Okay. If parents don't want to yeah, go yeah. or to inquire or to find knowledge in parenting, then they are always found or caught up in a crisis. I do want to ask, for example, just give me like yeah. an illustration. Um, I have this child mm -hmm. who's beating me, she's throwing tantrums. What can I as a parent do at that moment? You're saying to calm down, but yes. like, how do I calm down and how do I now direct my child to do you know, the right thing? Just th 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 that's the time to, 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 to what we call to reconnect the child. Try to understand. Kuja mm -hmm. oh. oh, okay. Uh, and then sometimes they are not able to express it mm -hmm. because even themselves they, they don't know they are confused they do not know exactly what they need it's true so it's you're supposed to bring them closer if you're not careful you become severe you hit and smack mm -hmm. anytime you think you spank you know you mm -hmm. don't you slap you hit hard you lock up in a closet mm -hmm. it's good to, to try to understand if they're not able to express themselves you need to try to understand come you nimbaya Mm. Now this is what I call explain the, the, the logical consequences of an action to a child. Mm -hmm. It is wrong. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Try to bargain with them. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is where parents, I say, become severe at that time. You become so severe. You become so severe at that time. You become so severe. You want to scream when you come to the backbone. So you break the backbone. You, you pinch. Yeah. You, you hurt them. You injure skin. You tear mm -hmm. a uh, vein. Oh, no. That is the time you are supposed to be more. Now, see, mm -hmm. let me take you back a little bit because it's a good question. Your child is in these terrible years, terrible two, terrible three years, but you are not there. They are in school. They practice. They are acting out harshly. You know, they are irritable, they are cranky, they are pushy, they are bossy in school, but you are not there. By the time you come at 9 p.m. to pick the child, Amechoka and Takakulala, you are hardly aware of what is happening in the in terrible school. two years. So they are bullies in school. You are not there, you do not see it. <laughs> so that one is postponed, postponed. By the time you realize, Ako high school, Ama Ako University, ni kupush what na kuchoma mashule. Oh my goodness. Yeah, schools now start got, uh, they got down schools, they... Can you see? It's terrible. It's Every terrible. action has got a consequence. consequence. You okay. ignore, you overlook, it has a, an impact later in life. Mm -hmm. That is what uh, we, we, we're really talking about here. Mm -hmm. We want to start winding down. Yes. And I just want us to pick up on where, now, what it entails to be a good parent. Okay, right. Okay. So we are coming now to, because there are so many other things we can talk about parenting, but allow me to just talk about those four. Uh, I think there are four, yeah. five there, there about. Five. There are five. five. So allow me now to talk about balanced Parenthood. Yes, let's talk about that. Balanced parenting is where you are aware of all those types of parents and you try to balance it out. First of all, by trying to set values early in life, not only setting up, but also trying to follow it up, mm -hmm. trying to understand that a child has needs, mm -hmm. exposing them to an environment that you are going to fulfill those needs, but controlling, controllably. You have to control it. You are not overindulgent, you indulge, but you indulge with a reason, with a good reason, with a, with, with a logical uh, you know, reason. And you also explain to a child, you cannot have pizza today, for example. You had it yesterday. You cannot have pizza daily. I, cannot ha I don't have money for pizza every day. There are other needs. Mm -hmm. I need to buy your clothes, or I need to take you to school, or I need, I need you to, I need, uh, you know, if you are paying rent, uh, this house we are paying, okay. let them start okay. to understand, okay. right? right? I need money to go to work. Mm -hmm. I need money for the car if you have one. I need okay. money to buy, I need to balance. We also need money for Christmas. You'll be going to see your aunties or your grandpa. Mm -hmm. You so, try to make them understand a little bit as they grow. Mm -hmm. But you know, at two years, one and a half, they cannot understand. The only thing you can make them understand is that sometimes there's a no, and your no means a no. Because uh, the, the other problem is, you say a no here, then, and then you say yes. Then you say yes. So that's, that's, that, oh, no. it confuses the child. It you does. said no, but now you have given. 
So, so they said to them, everything is permissible in life. Right, very true. So you're a saying balanced no, but parenting. it's not really enough. Exactly. They know you will give exactly. it Exactly, it's called balance. You have to balance it. So what I'm getting from being a good parent is you have to be self-aware. Self-aware. You have to be aware. Aware. Awareness. And then be and close to the child. Be mm -hmm. available. How do we create the self-awareness in a person? For example, I'm this parent. I, I know and I realize that I, I didn't really grow up in a very good parenting parent setup when I was growing up. Now, I'm trying to be aware. How can I be aware? It begins by, by acquiring knowledge. Mm -hmm. There are so many seminars and forums and books you can read and right. movies you can watch right. on parenting. Okay, okay. Our people have a problem with trying to get or acquire knowledge. Mm, and that's why I said these phones with the data, you, 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 there's no need of what's happening the whole day and laughing with people and showing, you know, showing, the, showing off or you know, looking at, 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 <laughs> at, 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 at some models of phones yeah, and clothes. It's the, still okay, I'm, I'm, but you I'm need to also balance it. Remember your parent, mm, balance by trying to acquire knowledge. Very true. And because I'm remembering life, someone yeah. said, um, if you want to hide anything from an African, you could just hide it in a book. Exactly. And they won't find it. People don't read. <laughs> people don't. They don't read. They I only read true. because there's an exam in the corner or because they want a pay hike. Oh my goodness. That's so true. If you go to town, That's in the bookshops, you only see people, if you see someone strolling in the bookshop or walking around the bookshop, they are doing so because it's a curriculum book. It must be bought for January. <laughs> but the books that are self-motivational, <laughs> the Bible, other Daddy, books, uh, for parenting books, don't. books on cookery, people don't read. Those books, actually bookshops now are, are, are shutting down. Actually, do you know, let me give you an example, it's, it's a little bit laughable. Tell me, tell me. If there's any chaos in town, if there's a riot in town, any town, if you want to be safe, run into a bookshop. <laughs> because nobody comes there. Run into a bookshop. Nobody comes. <laughs> you, you only see people with headphones and earphones <laughs> down the street listening to some music, which is okay, but, but the wrong things at the wrong time. Okay. You're a parent mm -hmm. and you're busy on WhatsApp uh, 10 hours a day or 5 hours a day. You're on flight five hours, you're on train five hours, yes, was up on Facebook, and you have a I child at home. So, Aki, we do need to cultivate a reading culture. Reading culture. Right. Inquisitorial so, culture. Mm, research, research oriented kind of a study. You don't, no, don't only read because there's an exam or you need a pay hike. Read to beat yourself, That's to true. understand parenting, to understand the wherewith of life, life skills, all that. And it's all the information. Double. In fact, I don't. Not even in a book right now. Books are now becoming e-books. I don't have to go to a bookshop. I can no, still no, subscribe no, to no. a site Very true. and be able to read a lot of stuff. That's so true. All right. So apart from, you know, learning through knowledge, yes. what else can you do? You say, attend seminars, parenting attend seminars, seminars. Okay. right? Listen to forums, All right. Right? All right? Make time, spend money to pay for a seminar, a mm. team building, no, not a team building, a seminar, educative a kind of a seminar or a forum. Spend money for that, budget for that, so that you become a good parent. Okay. Some of the mistakes brought out by dysfunctional parenting are out of ignorance. Okay. And you know ignorance is not defense. Well, mm -hmm. After all, the impact is already there. It's a ripple effect. The child became you know, unbalanced in life it's because so of your choice. It's, it's, it's not like an exam where you can retake. Yes. This is life happening it's like, every day. Yes. You, ca you cannot take back tomorrow, yesterday. A mistake yesterday is done. A misstep is a misstep, period. Exactly. Right. So we want to wind up, unfortunately, time uh, yes, is yes. not on our side. But to, uh, next week we'll be back talking on the same issue. We'll have a few minutes to talk about yes. what you've not covered today. Yes. And then we'll have our panel. They'll be asking the questions that um, we probably will be yeah, having. Exactly. There are so many questions that we have on parenting. And there's so much knowledge out here. And we are so thankful to David Kibe for coming to talk to us about such crucial matters. All right. So if you have any questions or any comments, you can talk to us through our social media handles facebook focus tv kenya instagram focus tv underscore kenya and twitter at focus tv kenya i want to give uh, david to uh, an opportunity to say how you can reach him as well if you want to contact him personally well uh, let me begin by saying next time we're going to talk, talk about how to discipline a child now. okay okay how okay. to discipline right. a child we'll okay. talk about that next time if you want to reach me you can use my facebook uh, page david kibe or you can use Twitter, Mina K. David. Mm -hmm. uh, you can also reach me on my mobile number that is on the screen. I'm just a call away. All right. Thank you so much, David. 
Mm. We've had an amazing time and I'm sure you've had an amazing time as well. We are um, unfortunately out of time, but remember to join me tomorrow for Talent Thursday. We are going to have an amazing, amazing, amazing artist on set. So don't go anywhere for tomorrow. And today, have a lovely day. It's been Women Chat Wednesday and my name is Victoria Chibet. Thank you for joining me on the Morning Bright Focus Show. See you tomorrow.